You're listening to Tap, and I'm so happy that you are with us today. My name is Mena, and I am interviewing Lisa Tahir. And she is an author, psychotherapist, podcast host, artist, founder of Psychoastrology, someone who uses astrology as the diagnostic tool to identify core wounding. I, I'm quoting that because I think that is truly daring greatly. And I, I can't wait to open that up and see what it means. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you for being here. Mana, thank you so much for having me on your show. And I really love the name Therapeutic Astrology because that's exactly how I utilize the placement of Chiron and our birth chart to identify and heal our core wounding. So these can be core healings, in fact, that happen within us. Yeah. And so you've coined this term psychoastrology. Yes. Why did you do that? How did you do that? What's the story behind it? If you think about it, there we talk in, I'm a therapist. I'm a licensed therapist, not an astrologer. Yet key components of astrology for me center around it being a beautiful blueprint of uh, our propensities, our abilities, where we might experience some challenges. And I used to struggle with that for actually many years, thinking it's something prescribed to me because the stars were in these patterns when when I was born. And I've come to realize, Mana, that we wrote our birth chart. I wrote my chart. You wrote yours. Right. This is nothing prescribed to us. This was written by us. And when we take ownership of this, it really can shift things and gives us the autonomy and freedom of do we like the life experiences we're living or not. And if we're not, then let's change it. And mm -hmm. I think we we change our patterns through the thoughts that we think. The thoughts that we think create our belief systems, what we believe is true for us. And we can only go as far as our largest limiting belief. That's kind of like the glass ceiling. Right. And when we recognize that, and start to do the healing that might be required to think bigger thoughts and have healthier beliefs, then we start to inhabit just more of the life we want. Our orbit changes because our frequency changes. The frequency of our thoughts change. And that's what I talk about even as the Chiron effect. Like we're a mini solar system and we habituate and orbit people, places, and things every day. And people, places, and things orbit us. So psychoastrology really just talks about that intersection of our personal psychology with our natal astrology and all that the power there is there for us to create and change and grow. And I just find that to be really exciting to help people do that and help myself do that. I wonder what you think about it. Well, <laughs> I have to join you there. I have to join the choir there. <laughs> Yeah, good. I'm, I'm certainly uh, completely in alignment with that. So, and thank you for mentioning the title of your book, because I just mentioned that you are an author, but we are specifically today talking about the Chiron effect, the title of your book. Um, and so, so when you coined this, I mean, isn't it a big thing to say now, psychoastrology, this is my term and this is what it means. It's kind of a big thing. I was just curious you know, about it, that. It just felt really easy. I was actually talking to a friend one night and her and I threw out the term psychoastrology and she was like, you should trademark that. And I was like, okay, I will. And it was actually really easy and simple to do. I love words. I love um, creating things. I have a US patent for people that use wheelchairs to be able to blow glass as an art form from their wheelchair. So I've always just created oh. things. Like for me, it's it's like yeah. playing. And so I think it was, you know, in therapy, there's terms like psychosocial, psychobehavioral. We talk about psychospiritual. Right. Um, and so for me, just psychoastrology was kind of such a natural thing. I was so surprised that it hadn't been coined before, to be honest. So that's how that happened with I my see. wonderful friend. Oh, great, great. Okay. Okay. 
I, I you I've satisfied I'm satisfied now with, uh, awesome. with that answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have spoken about uh, and like warning for trigger warning. I'm jump just jumping right in here, um, but I've spoken about suicidality in this podcast before. So I would like to read a quote from your introduction in the book that indicates the power of your work with Chiron. Okay. Okay, so Chiron asked Zeus if he could die because the pain of his unexpected trauma was too much to bear. How often have you in your own heart and mind wished for an ending of pain created by circumstances beyond your ability to cope? Some of you reading this now may have wanted to take your life in order to stop the pain created by others or yourself. The gift of Chiron's psychoastrology is that it's within our ability to heal through empathy and self-forgiveness. As we heal, comfort is found through the inner voice that offers us understanding, encouragement, and compassion. That's a, it's a huge thing. I mean, what? I think it is. I think utilizing <laughs> empathy for ourselves and forgiveness for ourselves is key in healing because I think wounds and pain stay active and activated through our lack of forgiveness of ourselves first and foremost. I think we're taught about forgiveness as something we give to others. And while that's true on one hand, on the other hand, the other side of that coin is the forgotten piece around forgiving ourselves for maybe doing things, acting in ways or co-creating in ways that cause us pain or harm. And we think we heal by judging ourselves and being really harsh and, and mean and like, oh, you know, like you fucked up and you're stupid. And, and that just makes the wounds and pain deeper. And it never allows us to heal instead of really taking some time to empathetically attune to ourselves and that we just didn't have the skills at the time to do it differently and today you can learn those skills But Lisa, like, why, why, yeah. why what is this intent behind mentioning that you might want to take your own life i mean have you have you been experienced with that theme or why what is your intention from mentioning specifically that Well, I've been a therapist for over 25 years, and I've worked with a lot of people who have been suicidal. Okay. I've worked with people that have taken their lives, okay. unfortunately, okay. and I experienced suicidal <laughs> thoughts and feelings okay. when I was younger. So I know mm -hmm. how powerful and how painful it is to feel that alone with things that you don't know how to manage or cope with <laughs> and just the desperation that one feels and I would love to people for people to have hope for themselves and know that you can learn how to really be with that part of yourself with more loving kindness instead of judgment and criticism right so because of the myth behind Chiron this is a layer of the Chiron effect it's a little part of it anyway uh, yes because uh, Chiron has been many Things and, and what you just read, Chiron was the Greek centaur of healing, of pharmacy, of botany, of medicine, of therapy, and he tutored Asclepius. And even when you go to the doctor today and you see the staff with the two snakes, the staff of medicine, it's called the staff of Asclepius. And Chiron actually gave that to Asclepius when he kind of graduated and was ready to be a healer himself. So we even see this Chiron reference every time you go to a doctor and see that symbol. Wow. Yeah, it was given by Chiron, which I never knew till I started researching. Chiron gave it to who? Asclepius. Who is? Asclepius was a healer. Okay. And founder of modern medicine. Mm. So yeah, that's the staff of medicine given by Chiron. And it's it's called the staff of medicine is Asclepius's staff. So how is it connected? This is the big question. With to what the, the the wound? No, um, the wound and the healer. I'm thinking about because okay. we're talking about someone who, I mean, um, 
ask someone else to i mean he he wanted to die right because of his pain and yet he's such a great healer yes and that's i mean look at our our lives he really experienced the paradoxical human experience where living life there's ebbs and flows where life is wonderful and we're in sometime bliss and happiness and satisfaction but a loved one dies a relationship ends something painful happens we experience a betrayal and abandonment or we abandon ourselves through addiction through uh not caring for ourselves a health issue and we experience like tremendous emotional pain and dissonance and so chiron really really experienced our human frailty and our strength to be resilient and to heal and so i think he beautifully depicts in that greek mythological story kind of the journey of our lives is being a spirit in a human body on this earth hmm. that it's both painful and i mean this archetype is is something i mean the the first time that i met it i was kind of re relieved because oh i can have so many mistakes and still <laughs> you know still teach others and still be a role model at some level But then as the years has gone by, I'm thinking you also need to be in integrity, right? Integrity. Right. Yeah. So so I'm having some questions about this paradox with Chiron. And I just want to hear you talk <laughs> about that. Sure, Mana. <laughs> and it, it's it's a balance like all things. I don't mm. necessarily believe that we make mistakes. Mm. That word, again, it's, it's critical and judgmental right, and it right. robs us of what we learn mm. through the things we go through that work out differently than what mm. we hoped or expected. There's so mm. much to learn there. There's so much information mm. in the things that we experience emotion around, be it positive, joyful emotion, like, yes, like more of this, this really wor is working out for me. And then painful emotion where we're wounded or abandoned. It, it's an invitation to love ourselves more deeply and be with those younger parts of ourselves. We're so multi-layered mm -hmm. and multifaceted like a diamond And all these different aspects, we have desirable aspects that we love about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we have aspects that we try to hide from people or ourselves. And that's what Chiron illuminates by being in one of the signs. Chiron is in is in Aries or Gemini or Taurus or Leo in your birth chart. And when we understand this, we can really understand the places and the patterns where we've sourced some insecurity a sense of inferiority even. And for some people, it just might be like an ouch, like a little bit of a twinge of like, oof, like, okay. And and for others, it might be a deep traumatic wounding, like when we've experienced sexual abuse or witnessed domestic violence and we're left with feeling like the world isn't safe for us to be in. And that sets up patterns of often unhealthy relationships. We might attract partners that abandon us like we were abandoned in childhood. And so it's really important to heal these areas of our psychology, of our belief system, so that we can have healthy relationships and people that love and want to be with us. And that's what inspired me to be a therapist, is to help people really heal these parts of ourselves, because I believe we deserve to be happy. I think it's our birthright. I believe we deserve to have abundance. Mm -hmm. Yet we have to become the people to really believe that for ourselves through and through for mm -hmm. it to manifest and that to be our experience. Mm -hmm. And we're all on various degrees of that that path, mm -hmm. so to speak, the cat based is on what we believe. Your cat yes. is in the microphone. <laughs> She loves being in the videos. This is Smelly Cat. She loves being seen and known. Uh, so the, yes. li the listeners can't see, but maybe they can hear some scratches through your microphone. So that's yes. that's the cat. I'm so happy that's that we are not meeting in life because I'm I'm terrified for cats of cats. Oh, how come? I I think a past life phobia, honestly. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, because it's so think, severe. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry that happened. Yeah. Well, I've, maybe I'll resolve it at some point. Okay, yes. but to, to what you were saying, <laughs> I hear that you, you're talking about that in the book, that the Chiron effect offers you a way of decoding the underlying factors influencing 
the magnetic pull, I think that's so powerful that you put it like that, the mag magnetic pull that keeps you in the same pattern. That's what you were just speaking about, right? It's the same pattern and and frequency of whatever problem. Um, so Yes. Yeah. And, and healing is found in thinking thoughts that are about the solution. It's a whole different feel, even if you think about it. If you think about something in your life right now, for those of you listening, that that is a problem for you, that's problematic. We tend to wake up on a new day and kind of pick the thought back up where we left it yesterday. And that perpetuates the same kind of patterns, the same experience. And, and hopefully a lot of your life is being lived in desirable ways where you want to wake up and have it be the same. But I think there's also areas where we want We want more joy. We want more love. We want more prosperity. We want more health. We want more freedom. And so to get there, it takes, I think, studying new ways of thought to where we lay train tracks in our mind that are taking us to new places mm -hmm. instead of the same old places. And that's why I wrote my book. It gives you mm -hmm. some practical takeaway steps, some new thoughts to think. I offer affirmations for every placement of Chiron to help you start to create new belief systems. And that will create brand new experiences in your life, new things showing up that are just amazing that you really want because you start to believe that that's possible for you. And you start to maybe do things differently. You might not text that same person that's mm -hmm. caused you so much pain. You might decide to just let them be mm -hmm. and move on in your life and maybe go starting working with a therapist or finding a book that resonates with teaching you how to love yourself more deeply, how to set some boundaries with yourself. Because I think boundaries are often taught as we need to set boundaries with others. Like, no, you cannot say that to me. No, you mm -hmm. cannot treat me this way. But I think conversely, some of the biggest boundaries we need to set are with ourselves. Like, I'm just not going to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to engage in this kind of conversation. I'm going to go do something healthier mm -hmm. for myself. And that can take some real restraint because sometimes we want to be right You know, so we're, we'll kind of send that text to try to convince someone else. And I say that because I know I've done that too. But it typically doesn't end that well versus doing something new and different. Mm. Does that resonate with you? Absolutely. And that's because there is this magnetic pull towards uh, the old and the, the, the pattern, the familiar pattern. And then you say, introducing something new new ways of thinking, new possibilities through this knowledge of Chiron and specifically your Chiron in, in your chart. Yes. So, I mean, okay, so I, I, I looked at, at your chart and I'm not going to say a whole lot about it, but just this fact that... I don't that mind you, if you do, okay. that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But just this fact that you have Chiron conjunct the moon and, and you don't work specifically with the whole chart. Right. So I'm curious what that means. Yeah. Since I'm a therapist kind of using the Chiron uh, psychoastrology to help mental health. So I'm curious what that means. Yeah. Chiron conjunct my moon. But that's that is sort of it. I mean, because the moon is you can you can be a bit superficial and, and call it emotions. That's that's one level. And But if you understand emotions, you know, we'll understand the moon deeper as well, because it is really the the lens, the emotional lens that you see everything through. You know, just like mm -hmm. when, when something powerful happens, the reason you remember it is because of the emotions that were activated right at the time. Yeah. So that's the thing with the moon is, it, because you go through life and you see a lot of things that you don't notice, right? We all do. We don't notice everything. But the things right. that we specifically notice and that we prefer and that we take in, that's the moon interesting yeah so you 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 can say that your preference is with Chiron in a way like you have a, a very private affinity with Chiron okay and yeah. normally normally for people are usually for people it's not that they know about this they don't know about the right. archetype but so it means something else for them it might mean that they are a healer a, a earth wound we never know you know at what level you're operating here um but for you it's Uh, that's it like you are the healer and you've 
even you're even talking about this archetype. So it's kind of fantastic, I think. That it's so Thank private you. That makes you. a lot of sense. Yes. And deeply personal. I know even when I wrote the book, Mana, I felt like I was charged with this um like big thing like it had to be birthed like I had to do it it uh, felt beyond because I've I've always wanted to write a book and I had all these scrap notebooks of ideas and thoughts but nothing stuck till this Chiron thing came to me through meditation and it felt literally like I can't really fully live until I complete this book like it felt that important because uh, I really wanted people to understand themselves through the lens of empathy through the lens of self-forgiveness softening judgments and because mm -hmm. i think that's when we really are able to listen to understand to others versus like listening to just say what what we think or prove a point like mm -hmm. we, we're really free from defensiveness mm -hmm. i think when we heal this vulnerability within ourselves that Chiron illuminates where we're really free to sit with people and not take things so personally. There might be a twinge of it, you know, like I still might have like a twinge of, of a trigger, but it's not what it used to be at mm -hmm. all. Like I can really see like, this is really someone else's experience and someone else's lens. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to get so bent out of shape or feel so hurt or feel um, just so intensely personally about, things does that make sense yeah like i can observe without being so reactive and that's been really liberating and freeing and and what has changed in order for you to do that be more observant and not take it personal really understanding that people are living at the level of their own understanding mm. and 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 experience and like i don't have to take that on mm. Even even in some close relationships where I had some challenges with a dear friend I had been friends with for almost 40 years, and I noticed her and I, it didn't feel good to be together. I was being criticized and kind of poked at, and I suddenly realized it's always been like that. Since we were 19, I just somehow had kind of a blind spot or thought, like, this is okay, or I kind of sourced humor from being like the butt of a joke and allowing that to be okay. And it suddenly started not to feel good when I, when I was really deeply healing my Chiron wounding, having to do with valuing myself, okay. my own um, value and worth. And so as I started to heal and feel more valuable and feel more worthy and really like approve of myself, this person and the way that they treated me, it was so out of alignment with who I had grown into that mm -hmm. like I, I decided to have a conversation and share how much I love and care about this person, but like the things that they were saying, it, it was really hurting my feelings. And, mm -hmm. and could we do this differently? Like, could she mm -hmm. do this differently? And she was so shocked. She was like, no, no, like, I don't want to be accountable or responsible for mm -hmm. the things I'm saying. And I was like, well, that's a deal breaker for me. Like, I care so much about you. Like I, you know, I make sure what I'm saying is kind and kind of like, it was kind of hard to believe. How would you not want to do that if you love someone? But I had to come to this understanding. We were in two different places at this point. And I cried my tears for like a year plus. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I was able to lovingly kind of surrender my pain around this and, and allow, you know, just allow her to go her, you know, on her path and me to be on mine. Mm -hmm. And I feel like at some point we'll circle back because I feel like though it might be a no, it, things are usually just a no for right now, sure. not a no forever. Sure. And that helped me soothe myself. Like this is just like a no for right now, but mm -hmm. I know she's doing some healing and growing. And I feel like at the right time we could circle back and have a conversation but and you know until then like my life it has more peace mm. now and I've attracted people that really want to be with me that was one of my affirmations I attract people that really want to be with me mm. and I feel like that's for someone listening if you've had experiences that have been painful in relationships to really start to sit with I attract people that love and want to be with me yeah. and just sit and how good that feels even if it's not here yet because it'll be here and like start to notice like who you're inspired to talk to and who comes to you. Like if, you know, like that started to really up level 
my life and change my patterns. Mm. And I started showing up differently. And does that make sense? It really yeah. started to heal this area of relationship in my life. Absolutely. And I'm thinking about, it might relate to, I, I think all, I think you say this in your book, right? That you recognize yourself in, in all of them. And that's how it is with astrology. We are basically all of it. But I am thinking in spe specific Chiron in, in Aries. Um, yeah. And around uh, having had to be strong. I mean, maybe too early or in an inappropriate way that could be the shadow. And then, then the resource is really when the courage is there to to be strong with allegiance to yourself, if you know what I mean. Like yeah. this is this is what I want to be strong about and not take on the responsibility for others, for example. Yes. That really resonates, Mana, because uh, having Chiron and Aries, I grew up where I had to take care, I had to parent my two younger siblings mm -hmm. when I was 13, 14, 15. And I feel like I never uh, got to have kind of the childhood that was really carefree. There were moments of that, but I always felt so responsible and having to care for my younger siblings when I was still a child myself. Yeah. And that caused patterns of me being a caretaker to, to, the point of neglecting myself, like really caring for others and, and not being aware of what I need. Like that was like totally mm -hmm. out of my awareness. Like when you said Chiron is a lens that we notice things through, yeah. like I wasn't noticing myself. I was so attuned to caring for others mm -hmm. and that set up for being taken advantage of sometime and not knowing like why I wasn't being seen or heard. And it's because I wasn't taking up the space, mm -hmm. so to speak, emotionally, like really minimizing my own needs to fit in and be loved. And it's been a long journey of knowing it can be me and them. It can be me and you. It doesn't have to be one or the other needs being met. Like it mm -hmm. can be <laughs> both. <Yeah. laughs> and so that's been my healing journey. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, the moon is also the mother, right? You're talking about the, the care take a archetype so so for there to be some some pain around that and then having turned that around to actually take care of yourself in an inspiring way for for others as well yes where is your chiron it is in gemini oh so that has to do with <laughs> empathetic attunement and like a core wounding and empathetic attunement or sometime <laughs> like maybe having been bullied misunderstood um for misperceived sure. was that ever for were sure. those ever issues okay i really liked when i read that empathetic attunement absolutely yes <laughs> yeah. you know when you think about empathetic attunement is a therapy term where in working with clients and we're doing inner child work mm -hmm. and uh, often uh, a person's experience is when they were young and they had a need and the, you know, healthy parents are able to attune mm -hmm. to that need mm -hmm. and, and like care for the child, care for the adolescent. And that's how we learn that our needs matter, that we matter, that we can verbalize a need and have it met. But where there's been wounding there and a parent might be unavailable for some reason, they might be working a lot or they might have an addiction or they might, um, for whatever reason, just not be attentive yes. to your inner emotional states. Mm -hmm. We don't learn to attune to ourselves and it can produce confusion around how to source being seen and heard in the ways we desire. And it can be frustrating because this person might experience like, oh my God, you're not hearing me. And then that can cause anger and frustration. And then somebody perceives you as, oh, you're just like bitching all the time or, you know, but you're really not, you really just want to be heard. And it can just be frustrating. For sure, certainly. <laughs> I recognize that a lot. And then I'm also really thinking about Karen and Gemini as, you you were talking about I have to write this book right I can feel that way about this sort of thing as podcasting I'm like I have yeah. to, I have to do this I you know even when it's hard to have listeners and all the struggles that comes with having a podcast it's so important for me so that's the voice again it's being heard right 
Yeah, and you are being heard. I think you've healed your Chiron and Gemini through being a podcaster. Yeah. It's fully totally healed because mm-hmm. you are being yeah. seen and heard empathetically, and yeah. you're creating mm-hmm. community, and and it really helps heal any pa- past experiences where you weren't, because now you are, yeah. and it's just so beautiful yes. to see. Yeah. So that's how it is with Chiron through all the signs and wherever it is in in your specific chart, then it has yeah. that shadow side and then there's the resource in it. Exactly. So um, I just have a few more notes from your book. Uh, I know we have if like 10 more yeah. minutes or something. So we can learn to connect to our inner compass and confidence once we decide to heal our psychoastrology. So in that, I'm confused about what do you mean psychoastrology there? What what does that word equal? Sure. Yeah, I can hear how that is a little confusing. So when I mentioned inner compass, I'm speaking to the innate intuition and wisdom within all of us. <laughs> and I think sometimes women more than men might be trained away from honoring our intuition and our inner knowing to fit in, to take care of others, to please. And I think it's really about honoring and and getting more comfortable with that. When you have an internal yes or an internal no, even if it doesn't make sense, to learn to trust it Mm -hmm. because that's our compass and it's guiding us toward certain people, places and things and away from others. And it doesn't have to make sense for you to honor and just act upon what you know to be true. And I think that's also filtered through like how healthy are we mentally and emotionally? Because say if we grew up, if we did experience childhood trauma, like sexual abuse, like physical abuse or neglect or abandonment, our filter of the world is like looking through glasses where we're not safe. So I think we might have like an overactive intuition that might regulate us too much, like where we don't try enough because we're afraid. So that's what I mean by healing our psychoastrology, like healing that core wound or vulnerability mm. so that so that your intuition is working in alignment with joy and not fear. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah, a lot. I think it's quite common, at least when you have complex trauma, to be confused is what I'm hearing inside of me. Is it <laughs> out of fear or is it is it actually intuition? Yeah. Exactly. Cause I had to walk that path of healing my my intuition because it would kind of be overactivated sometime around self-protection mm-hmm. and maybe keep me from some joyful experiences. Cause I was afraid, you know, and when we start to heal that those parts, the younger parts of ourselves, that it uh, opens up life for us where we're able to take risks. And even if something goes differently, like we know we can handle it, like Mm -hmm. you're going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. It takes the fear out of it. And it makes, we can really act upon our curiosities, knowing whatever happens, we're going to be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that may be related to my last uh, quote here. I just, I just want to ask you about furiously paddling upstream with resistance to what is exhausting ourselves in the process that's what not to do of course <laughs> but i right. just i just like the the way that you're wording that uh, so do you have a point here also about going with the flow is that it yes definitely because i think sometime at least in american culture i don't know how it is for you like people are often uh praised and valued for like you know, gritting it out the hard way, like all this struggle. And it's kind of like, oh, those people are, you're amazing because you suffered, you know, and I think, and I think obviously you can learn through suffering, but what if we started to realign ourselves with learning through pleasure, learning through joy, like learning through happiness that we're led to a path of healing and discovery that's more with more ease and more flow and it's just as powerful and meaningful. It just feels a lot better mm-hmm. to our central nervous system, to our bodies, you know, our bo- the cells of our bodies pick up stress or peace and we can stay in better health and have longevity. I think when we really want to learn through joy instead of through struggle. Mm-hmm. So that's what that really addresses. Right. How is it related to Chiron, if it is? 
I think it's it's definitely related to Chiron as far as um, Chiron is how you can learn lessons through our through your pain and pain always has a message. Physical pain is trying to draw your attention to something that needs to be healed. And emotional pain is as well. It's it's wanting to draw your attention to something that needs to be healed. And I think once we heal kind of those core fractures or misalignments, then we can start learning through more joy because we've kind of set the bone, so to speak. I see. Does that make sense? Like set the bone and like now we can start on a new trajectory and it just feels so much better. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're so right that in our culture, suffering is being recognized more than if you just did it from an effortless place. (laughs) (laughs) And I think that's changing because we do hear more about flow states and, and living in alignment. And there's more podcasts about this and there's more people speaking about it. So I'm glad the narrative is changing so that people can just have an easier time and teach their children. So Mm -hmm. new generations, next generations can even learn to flow with more ease. And that's actually how we're designed to live. And that's when we're really living our mission and our calling and lighting the world up is when we're joyful and happy. We're not damaging and wounding people from our own wounds. We're Mm -hmm. supporting and loving people to be their full selves. And that just creates so much more amazing things in our world and raises the vibration, literally, of our planet. Yeah. Yeah. It's not... Once you talk about this combination of psychology and astrology, it's it's a big thing. <laughs> yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank absolutely. you for like being such a a leading voice about this, Mana. Well, you too. You wrote the book. <laughs> so, Lisa, I just want to first of all take a screenshot, and then while I do that, because I always I have to find the right buttons to press. While I do that, can you think if there's something? some message that you want to leave the listeners with? (coughs) I would love to leave listeners with the message. And if you can close your eyes for a moment, if you're somewhere to do that, if not, it's okay. And put your hands over your heart, one on top of the other, and breathe into your heart. And I want you to know how valuable you are, how important you are, how you're right where you're meant to be, need to be. And from this place, you can have, do, or be anything you want. It just takes some gentle, gentle coaxing and loving yourself there and that you matter. And nothing's wrong with you. Everything you've lived makes sense. And it's culminated into where you are. And you can change the things that you want to just be more happy about you're valuable and you're worthy. And I'd love you to breathe in. You are valuable and you are worthy. And to speak that throughout the day, I am valuable and I am worthy and see how that changes your life. Oh, thank you, Lisa. It is so easy to forget. <laughs> For and so... Reason. And and so important to remember. And so important to remember. Yes, yes. Ah, oh, thank you so much for that and for this whole conversation and for writing the book. And I will of course link people to you and you have your own show so people can find you there. You're so, so. welcome and thank you. This has been beautiful. Thank you so much.